Have you ever wondered how Spring Boot's embedded web servers are working? I mean, you add a dependency to your project, you hit run, and suddenly you've got your web application booting up on port 8080. How is that possible? Let's find out in this episode because it serves as a great example of how Spring Boot's magic in general works, and the keyword is conditions or conditional beans. Let's check it out. Okay, so as always, I prepared a completely empty Maven project for you. And when you have a look at the POMXML file, there's no dependencies. And first of all, we have to make sure that we know how to get an embedded Tomcat running without Spring, just a pure Tomcat. That's why you should open up a web browser, go to mainrepository.com, and I'll spoil you. There's a uh, dependency called Tomcat Embed Core. And it doesn't matter too much what version you're going to pick, 8.0, 8.5, 9, or whatever. I'll just pick the latest 8.5.3.7 version. Copy that back into the project. Make sure you'll put a dependencies tag there and put in the dependency. And you'll see you've got two new libraries here, Tomcat and Bad Core, and the Annotations API. And that's everything you need to get started. So in your main class, instead of just printing out hello world, you can start writing tomcat tomcat equals new tomcat. Isn't that simple? So that's the line where you say, hey, I want to have a new web server. That web server should run on port 8080. And obviously you could make that configurable, but for now 8080 will do. Then in the past, tomcats had multiple contexts. What that means is you could deploy multiple web applications to multiple contexts, so slash web application one, slash web application two. If you're just running one web application like we do, you're gonna have a null context which has no path, so no context path and no doc base. You can extract a variable here, but you still need a context. Then you can add a servlet to that context. We'll talk about that in a second. So you'll have to put something here. That's your test servlet. You're gonna put, you're gonna put test servlet here. Right, actually that's not a call it test servlet, but rather something like hello world servlet, which you'll have yet to program. Then you need a servlet mapping, so add servlet mapping decoded slash again and uh, make sure that here you'll put the same name for your servlet right click tomcat start or rather write tomcat start and then tomcat git server await otherwise your application will boot up and then immediately shut down again and here you make sure the application stays open Right, act at the exception to the method signature, and now it's time to get back to your Java basics and write a hello world servlet. So let's create, just because I'm lazy, an inner class here. Implement servlet actually can extend the HTTP server class, like so. Make sure the import is right, and then you override a method, the do get method, like so. And you write something immediately to the output stream. Actually, not to the output stream, but you'll get a writer. And what you want to do is you want to print out something like HTML, like so. Maybe put in the body. Let's make it big, new h1. Yay, this stuff works. Close the H1 again. So all you did now is configure Tomcat, add a servlet. All that servlet does is print out some bogus HTML. You start and wait, and hopefully that works. So let's debug the application. It takes a second to boot up. You can see starting protocol handler 8080. It looks like it worked. Let's make a test. Go to localhost 8080 
and you can see, yay, this stuff works. Great. So now you know, just with these couple of lines, you can get a Tomcat up and running. And obviously here you hard coded a server to yourself. And with Spring, you basically, there's gonna be a Spring server that boots up, will boot up a Spring application context, scan in all your beans and make sure your REST services work. But the um, idea is the same. You just have a Tomcat and you add a servlet. So now let's take Spring into the mix and see how we can change things up. First of all, let's make some space here. Let's say you want to extract that whole thing to public static class Tomcat launcher, just to make some space. And then you start Tomcat, you move the stuff down here. Make sure to throw the exception like so. Right, then open up Firefox again. Again, you need to go to main repository. And as you might know by watching my other videos, you need the spring context dependency. You just pick the latest one as a minimal dependency to get spring up and running. Wait a second and you'll see there's going to be quite a couple of dependencies being pulled in here. Let's see, right? That's all you need for now. And then you want to write a configuration class. Let's call it public static class my configuration. Obviously, obviously, in case you're wondering why I'm putting making these all inner classes, it's just not to have to switch back and forth in this video. But obviously, you can make them move them to an upper level. And you will say something like public Tomcat launcher. Let's wire the bean specifically. So you're gonna have a Tomcat launcher bean here. Return new Tomcat launcher. At the end, don't forget the bean annotation. And then you might wanna make that thing here at post construct. So you create the Tomcat launcher bean and the start method gets invoked and then your application waits for your Tomcat server. Actually, that here, that line here, will block your complete application if you don't do it in a separate thread. As an exercise, I want you to tell me why, and if you don't know, just write a comment, uh, and then I'll explain it to you. But you'll have to execute this line in another thread to make things alive for yourself easier, right? So you have a Tomcat launcher up here, and uh, you're going to create a new annotation config application context. I like, I love that name. My configuration class, like so. You have your context, and then you can play with it, play with it later on. But that should initialize your Tomcat launcher, should boot up your Tomcat on port 8080, and everything should be working. Let's see. Hit run. Right, actually, I should have made sure to close down the old application. Let's try that again. Now you can see that the application booted up and I got play, but the question is why did the application shut down again? And it has to do with that line down here because I forgot to start the thread like so. Let's run it again. And now you can see Tomcat booted up. You got the play down here, right? That's fine. Let's triple check if our stuff is still working. So let's open up Tomcat again. Local 8080 reload. So that works as well. Great. So now you springified the whole thing, but you have your Tomcat launcher here with the add bean notation. And that's rather explicit. So now let's learn about something in Spring called the add conditional annotation. And let's see, say that we have a Tomcat on class path condition class. Let's find out what that means. Again, create it in here. Now it's getting a bit dirty, actually. Let me just put that here and we'll put everything onto an upper level later on. You have a condition, and that condition should be, well, if and only if 
you have these libraries, these two libraries on the class path, then please create a Tomcat launcher. Otherwise, don't create a Tomcat launcher. How do you do that? It's actually rather simple. Let's have a try here. You say class for name. And then what you want to do is, as you can see that Tomcat is the main class you want to invoke here. You just copy that name here. And class for name will simply try to get the class file for that name. And if you can find the uh, class, then return true. Otherwise, there's going to be an exception. So class for name will not return you true false. It will just throw an exception if the class is not there. And in that case, you can say return false. Okay, now let's boot up the application. And now we don't expect anything to change. Let's see. Ha, that was a silly mistake. That's because we made the condition an inner class not static. So now you're seeing the problems of putting everything into one class. Let's run things again. And as you can see, again, Tomcat boots up. You can, as always, triple check, double check, whatever you like, and it's still working. Now that is fine. You have a condition in here. And now our test, our actual test is what happens if we remove the Tomcat dependency. And you can do that by going to the pomxml file scope provided like so provided means it will be there on during compile time but not during runtime so it's effectively like removing the dependency but if i remove the dependency here completely now my code won't compile that's why i just put it to provided and now let's say let's see what happens we run the application and the application boots up immediately shuts down and you don't see any tomcat messages anymore because Tomcat doesn't get instantiated. Let's think about that for a second. You have a configuration and it says, well, if you have Tomcat on class path, then just boot up Tomcat for me on port 8080. That's hard coded, but obviously you could put in properties, values, whatever. And that's pretty much what Spring Boot does. When you run a Spring Boot application, it says, check if I have Tomcat enabled and if I have uh, on the class path and if I have Tomcat on class path, boot up. Let's see if you trust me on that. You can open up a browser and when you search for GitHub Spring Boot Start uh, Tomcat, you will find the dependency directly that Spring Boot that you actually include in your Maven XML file, your POM XML file, in your Gradle file. You have the Spring Boot starters, and there's the Spring Boot starter Tomcat. There's also a Spring Boot starter for Jetty, obviously, you can make sure, and for other web servers. But for now, let's have a look at what the Spring Boot starter Tomcat does. It's just a POM XML file. And when you go to that POM XML file, you'll see the only thing it does is it adds a dependency, mainly, you can ignore these two for now. That's the same dependency that we added just a second ago, a minute ago. Arg Apache Tomcat Embed Core. And that's all you need. You add the dependency to your Maven project. You have a condition. The condition annotation is triggered and you get a Tomcat. Let that sink in. Ask me any questions you have or write them in the comment section. Send me an email or whatever. But that's a great start to know how Spring Boot is doing things. Congratulations. That was a great introduction to Spring's magic. You know how web servers work, but now let's have a closer look at these conditional statements and have a look at how Spring Boot's property support works, i.e. you just add a couple of lines to an application properties file and suddenly you have Hibernate or your database set up. How is that possible? Let's find out in the next episode.